Dude, can you believe that Mermaid Man actually said this in an episode of SpongeBob, a kid's cartoon? Hello? So? What are you wearing? Like, look at the Rizzler over here, dude. Did you see his face when he asks? Yeah, there are a ton of these hidden jokes in SpongeBob that are for adults, clearly. Like, some of them are really dirty or really dark, and sometimes even really depressing. And in today's video, I've got a ton of them. Like, over 20, almost 50 of them in one video. And let's get right into it. Here's the first one. <laughs> Sorry, I'm late. I got caught in traffic on the way in here when that whole I'm gonna be doing this for the rest of my life thing reared its ugly head and I... Uh... <laughs> anyway, we're gonna go from cleanest to dirtiest. So let's start with the episode, The Bully. It takes place in the opening scene. Watch this and hopefully you guys can catch the joke. Excuse me, miss. I don't want to have to report you again. Bob! I was just wondering, is it the homework pencil on the left side of the paper next to the quiz pencil, or over on the right side all by itself? Or... I think it goes stuck inside your... Wait! I got it! You think it goes stuck inside his what? Yeah, this was definitely a dirty one right here on Nickelodeon's end. It's not that bad, but you can tell that this girl is fed up with SpongeBob's BS. I mean, imagine having a talking sponge beside you in class when it's like 9 a.m. you just got to school. You got the loud girls in the back eating Takis. Yeah, I don't blame her. Here's another dirty joke from another episode. It's time to say howdy to your favorite undersea peanut, Goofy Goober! The SpongeBob SquarePants movie has a ton of funny jokes, but this one in particular is definitely a little inappropriate. As some of you know, in the movie, SpongeBob wants to become the manager of the second Krusty Krab that's being built. And unfortunately for our favorite little sponge, he does not get the job and he becomes very depressed. So he heads over to Goofy Goobers and gets drunk off of ice cream. I did not catch this as a kid, but SpongeBob and Patrick get white boy wasted. Waiter, let's get another round over here. Oh, waiter! 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 Ah, the Bikini Bottom Zoo is having its annual free day. Free balloons. Free drinks. Free light bulbs. This is where things get pretty dirty. It's in the episode, The Smoking Peanut. And while SpongeBob and Sandy are in the middle of a conversation, SpongeBob abruptly has to leave. And his reasoning is because he has a haircut. Sandy is then pretty confused and questions why, because SpongeBob doesn't have any hair on his head. And then she eventually realizes that he could have hair somewhere else. All right, somewhere lower. Roll the clip. How come you're all twitchy like that? Twitchy, twitchy, who's twitchy? I'm not twitchy. Sorry, Sandy, I have to uh, 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 go get my haircut. SpongeBob doesn't have hair? Or does he? In a familiar restaurant, in a familiar part of town, a call goes out in frustration. Will you hurry up? A call that would normally be answered by Bikini Bottom's semi-retired champions if they weren't the ones causing the problem. This next one is a case of Squidward being a total freak. Like, Squidward, you nasty boy. So, in the episode Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy 5, my favorite Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy episode, by the way, there's a moment where Mermaid Man explains that his powers come from his costume, and that's why superheroes run around in, like, tights and underwear. But in response, Squidward has his own reasons. Listen to this. Once you put on these costumes, their fantastic powers will become yours. Wow, I didn't think superpowers worked that way. Sure, power's all in the costume. Why else would we run around in colored undies? I can think of three good reasons. Damn, Squidward, you a freak, boy. And dignity. <laughs> Back to the plank <laughs> For years, it has been my goal to acquire the secret formula for Pinaha! Okay, that's enough! Squidward ain't the only one that's a freak, though. Plankton's also pretty freaky. As in the episode Plankton's Army, when a stressed out Plankton is talking to his computer wife Karen about his plan failing, she suggests that Plankton surrounds himself with a bunch of beefy, strong, big men. And Plankton really likes the sounds of this. Like, he's really into this idea. Listen to this. It's not the beard. You just require a little help. Maybe some henchmen. Henchmen? 
Yes, what you need to do is surround yourself with muscular tough guys who will do whatever you say. I like the sound of that. Yeah, they're definitely not telling us something about Squidward and Plankton, and it's totally okay. They can live their lives. Let's head over to another episode, though, with more dirty jokes. Help! Oh, dear. Of course I'll help. This next one's actually like pretty dark in terms of how inappropriate the joke is, with Mrs. Puff thinking that Mr. Krabs wants to take advantage of her. It takes place in the episode Summer Job, and pretty much what happens is Mrs. Puff crashes her boat into the Krusty Krab, causing major damages, but she does not have any money to pay it off. With her being so desperate that she says she'll do anything, Mr. Krabs says that they could figure something out, and Mrs. Puff takes this the wrong way. I'm gonna play the clip and you guys can see what I mean here, this joke is very very inappropriate. Oh, please, don't tell the police. I'll be a dead man if I get caught. I'll do anything. It's gonna cost a fortune to get this fixed. Gracious me, I don't have that kind of cash. Don't worry. I think we can work something out. Huh? You mean we should go out on a date? Uh, interesting. No, I had something else in mind. Yeah, Mrs. Puff says a date, but that could mean anything, and Mrs. Puff should not have to go on a date with Mr. Krabs to pay off damages. Also, it's so weird because aren't they, like, in a relationship in the show? I don't know, whatever. Here's another dirty joke from another SpongeBob episode. Wouldn't you rather see them on my hands? Okay, and we can wear gloves on our feet and hats on our captain's quarters, too. Uh, actually, I have a confession to make. I don't know how to tie my shoelaces. This next one I'm going to make quick because it's a classic and I'm like 100% sure all of you have seen it before. It's in the episode Your Shoes Untied and it's at the very beginning of the episode. We can see Spongebob watching something on TV, this like weird footage here. It seems to be something inappropriate as when Gary walks in, Spongebob reacts like this. Uh, I was just looking for the sports channel, Gary. Yeah, I think SpongeBob was watching some inappropriate videos. This isn't the first time, though. We have a similar joke to this one in the episode Greasy Buffoons. Pretty much, Mr. Krabs wants to get this grease to come through this hose, but he is failing miserably and cannot get it to happen. But SpongeBob has an idea that he learned from a movie that he's seen. Let's listen to his idea. Hmm. Nothing's coming out. Mr. Krabs, may I see that? Saw this in a movie once. <laughs> Hmm, yeah, maybe I wasn't doing it right. Oh, never mind, I was. Yeah, you seen it in a movie once, huh, SpongeBob? I wonder what kind of movie you seen it in. Probably on one of those websites with X in the URL. All right, let's head over to another episode. More dirty jokes to come. It's nights like these that remind me of the time Mr. Krabs and SpongeBob thought they killed the health inspector. <laughs> now this one isn't necessarily dirty, it's more dark, and it's pretty much the entire episode Nasty Patty, where this health inspector comes and orders a bunch of food so we can try it all, but Mr. Krabs starts to think that he's lying just so he can get free food. Dude, look at how excited Mr. Krabs is to potentially kill this man. You're dancing with the crab man now. Hold on, I've got a jar of toenail clip in my office. Oops, I dropped it in the toilet. Well, fish it out and I'll dry it with me gym socks. And look at how excited he is once the dude starts choking on it. Listen, he ate it. Oh, look at him choke. Worst of all, though, is after they presumably kill this dude, Mr. Krabs over here decides for him and SpongeBob to try and hide its body. Like, I feel like I'm talking about a true crime story right now. Get a hold of yourself, boy. We gotta get rid of this body before anyone sees it. We gotta take it out and bury it. Don't get me wrong, I love this episode. It's a classic episode, but yeah, the entire episode in itself is a very dark joke. You guys didn't click on a video about dark jokes, though. You guys clicked on a video about dirty jokes, you freaks. You guys are just like Plankton and Squidward, so let's get back to the dirty jokes. Gary, looks like it's that time of week again. Bath time. Come on, let's go get the water started. 
You're gonna have to get in that tub, Gary. This next one takes place in the episode Gary Takes a Bath, and pretty much it's all about SpongeBob forcing Gary, this little stinker over here, to get in that bathtub and get clean. Now, SpongeBob tries a bunch of different attempts to get Gary in that bathtub, and one of them is by using soap and lying that they're like golden doublooms and pretending he's like a pirate. This show's hilarious. But if you listen closely, when SpongeBob gives the soap, he tells Gary not to drop the soap and winks at him. Like, seriously, look at the original clip with its original original audio, I cannot believe this joke made it into a children's cartoon. It's treasure! Look, doubloons! Don't drop them. Yeah, that was rough. Now, this next one, I'm kind of pushing it. I still think the joke's kind of dirty, but I don't know how intentional it was. This one's from the modern era of SpongeBob, so the footage is gonna be all HD and widescreen. I love it. It takes place in the episode Squidward's Sick Days. And yeah, there's this scene that I don't think I need to explain. Let's just roll the clip and you guys will see exactly what I'm talking about. Open wide. <laughs> Get that anywhere near my mouth. <laughs> Guess again. <laughs> Yeah, our boy Squidward got violated. I don't even care if it's a dirty joke, I just feel bad for Squidward. You have exactly 17 minutes to haul your carcasses off of the future site of the Chum Bucket Mega Bucket. Do you hear something? This is another one where I'm kind of pushing it. It might be a little bit of a reach I'm reaching, but in the episode Walking Small, SpongeBob over here gets a tan, all right? And at one point he's asked if it's an all over tan, in which SpongeBob looks down and says, well, not all of me. Roll the clip. SpongeBob, that was wonderful. Is that an all over tan? Well, not all of me. Interesting, SpongeBob, very interesting, and I'm not trying to see. What I do wanna see, though, are more dirty jokes, and here's another one from the episode SpongeGuard on duty that's very interesting. This one's also very interesting. I don't think I need to explain anything, though. This is one of the ones where you guys just gotta see the footage and the audio and just, yeah, take a look at this. Oh, what do you wanna be a lifeguard for? Nobody really likes those guys. I'm being a lifeguard is so dumb. All they do is blow, blow, blow on their stupid whistles. Rub, rub, rub that white stuff on their noses. White stuff, eh, Patrick? This clip's a little out of context, but they were definitely pushing it with this one. See anything you like? Yeah, I'll give you a buck fifty for this umbrella. A buck fifty for that? But it's an antique. It belonged to a queen. Ten bucks. Ten bucks? It's full of holes. It was the Queen of Switzerland. Now, I don't know if this next one is necessarily pushing it in terms of dirtiness, but it's definitely really sad and a very mature and adult joke. It can be found in the episode One Crab's Trash, another banger of an episode. I love this episode. I wish I had one of those soda drinking hats for myself, just saying. But during that graveyard scene, like I said, it's pretty sad, but look at this tombstone. It's Squidward. What's he doing here? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Here lies Squidward's hopes and dreams. What a baby. Squidward's hopes and dreams being dead is a very dark joke, and I don't think it's for children. I think it's hilarious, though, but yeah. I can definitely relate, Squidward. I can definitely relate, especially now that I'm older. But you want to know what's even more depressing than that? This joke in the episode Are You Happy Now, where it looks like Squidward is about to blast some My Chemical Romance and do something pretty dark. I can't seem to get happy. Maybe this will help. Damn, Squidward, you were feeling really emo that day, huh, my boy? In all seriousness, though, guys, depression's a real thing, just saying. So, like, if you ever feel depressed, you know, talk to your parents or your friends about it, just saying. It's all jokes in the video, but, you know, we all feel a little sad sometimes. All right, I got a little too serious right there, so let's break the awkwardness with another dirty, nasty adult joke. It's in the episode Squidtastic Voyage, and just, yeah, roll the clip. This calls for extreme measures. <laughs> Dude, what really makes this one funny and really makes it dirty is this mother and her kid's reaction outside. Plus also, damn, Squidward is a freak, bro. Like that was, that was deep. Squidward, can I talk to you for one second? I don't know, that's a pretty long talk. Has anything ever happened at your job that made it, well, not as fun as it used to be? Well, actually, yes. 
Really? What was it? Being hired. Random question, but who here would eat a Krabby Patty? I personally would, but here's another question. Who here would eat a Krusty Dog? Doesn't sound too appealing, and that's what the episode Krusty Dogs is all about. Now, this episode has a nasty joke. It's really dirty, but because the episode's about hot dogs, there are so many hilarious moments where the characters say wiener, and there are just times where you can tell it's meant to be a little funny. Here's a quick compilation of all of these jokes. Tastes just like a Krabby Patty, but it's shaped like a wiener. Hey, I liked your request, a wiener. Wieners! Wieners! Oh, forget about making those patties, just make the wieners! Wieners? 12 inches of deliciousness. I feel like I'm like 12 or 11 years old again, laughing at characters saying the word wiener, but here's the main event. This one is like, come on. Listen to what Squidward says here. We need stronger tactics. Right, something that would make Mr. Krabs' whole wiener thing blow right up in his face. Yeah, you want his wiener to blow up in his face, huh, Squidward? I thought I was watching a kid's cartoon? Uh, I don't know. Hello, roadside assistant. I've got a bit of a flat. My location where I'll be staying? Business or residence? Residence. You know, as bad as talking about wieners blowing up in your face is in a kid's cartoon, what I think is really bad is making jokes about cheating on your wife and lying about it. Which is what the Flying Dutchman, this dog over here, he's got that dog in him. Or I guess he's got that Gary in him. But that's exactly what he does in the episode Ghost Host. When he throws this party and just, here, I'm gonna roll the clip. You like teddy bears, I like teddy bears. You like ponies, I like ponies. Is that a wedding ring? Oh, this shows nothing. This man even tries to hide his wedding ring. Wild. I don't know though, is it as wild as Mr. Krabs breaking into his own mother's house to steal and play with her underwear? Roll the clip, Mr. Krabs, you're also a freak. I guess you're gonna miss the panty raid. Frilly things! We hit the jackpot! Oh yeah, <laughs> Mr. Krabs! <laughs> You finally came through for me, boys! I feel young again! Okay, to be fair, he didn't know that it was his mother's house, but this man was still down to be a total creep and steal a random woman's underwear breaking into her home. Kids, do not try this at home. You'll go to jail. Okay, we're reaching the end, but we're not there yet. I've got two really bad ones that I'm gonna cover, and I might even do a part two to this video, so let me know in the comments if you want me to. But this next one's in the episode, Suction Cup Symphony. Yeah, this is one of the ones where I'm just gonna play the clip. This one is really bad, dude. Like, really bad. I'm gonna play the clip, but let me know in the comments if I'm overreacting here. All right, get ready, play the clip. <laughs> Yeah, Spongebob just shoved his hand somewhere that the sun does not shine, and judging by the noise that Patrick made, it did not feel very good. Like, just listen to that scream one more time. <laughs> yeah, Spongebob stay far, far, far away from me, dude. Far away. All right, one more, guys. Mail delivery. Hello, I'm Squidward. Welcome to the Krusty Krab, where we never leave our post. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> This last one can be found in the episode The Plays The Thing, all right? And just look at this clip and it looks like SpongeBob is blowing up something else. Of course it ends up being balloons, but look at some of these early shots. Squidward's not at his post! <laughs> yeah, those look like condoms, just saying. What do you guys think though? Now, that's gonna do it for today's video, guys, but we're gonna be doing a part two to this video where we cover more dirty jokes in SpongeBob, so subscribe and click this video right here where I expose a ton of mistakes in SpongeBob. You won't believe some of these mistakes, so click the video, click it. All right, I love you guys. Shout out to the Grapple Gang and the Premiere Gang, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Peace.